This is a very special announcement to all. If you're tired of empty religious hypes without power, all roads lead to the Miracle Center. Here's your opportunity to witness real life miracles with Dr. Indy Adu, who has been taken into heaven and sent back to earth by God. A native of Nigeria, Dr. Adu is used mightily by Jesus to raise the dead, heal the sick, operate special miracles, and win many people to Christ. Join us every Sunday at 2 p.m., Tuesday at 7 p.m. at the Miracle Center, 1012 North Van Buren Street in Albany. For more information, log on to MyMiracleTV.org or call 229-638-1065. For over 30 years in nearly 40 nations around the world, God has been using Dr. Andy Aldo mightily, according to John 14, 12, to raise many physically dead and dying people, heal the sick, operate many special miracles, as well as winning many sinners to Christ. As the author of the internationally best-selling series known as Raising the Dead, Dr. Adu has been honorably received by many world leaders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, log on to RaisingTheDead.org for additional details because Dr. Adu is coming to your area for a great meeting and you need to be there. You remember, if you read the entire chapter 4, you will see the story. He was heading towards Jerusalem. But the Bible says he had to, he must. It was like an obligation. There was a, an urge, divine urge on his spirit to go through this city of Samaria. And you know the Samaritans and the Jews were not really I mean, good neighbors at all. Even though the, you know, the, the descendants of Abraham, if you like, the Samaritans were considered as half Jew and half you know, Gentile as, as though as they were in pure Jewish blood, if you like. So animosity and rivalry and hatred grew up between these two partic uh, this particular group of peop people. But Jesus was a bridge builder. And he was a peacemaker. So he stopped by the Samaritan community and he met with the lady, the Samaritan woman, and really started a dialogue, the discourse. Um, Jesus uh, sent his disciples into the city to go and buy food. I think he was making a way so that he could be free now, knowing fully well that he was going to meet with this lady to bring the good news of the kingdom to this lady's life, so that the lady now would be the one to carry that mighty revolution into the city and turn the whole city upside down by the power of God. He says here, it, um, from verse 27, John chapter 4, verse 27, Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or, why are you talking with, with her? Then, leaving her water jar, we're talking about the Samaritan woman, she left the water jar, the water container, or the bottle. The woman went back to the town and said to the people, now see how the kingdom of God is, in, is impacting the world. Jesus was using a powerful strategy here. Apart from the mustard seed and then the yeast, we are going to see another strategy. That if you want to really impact the community, you don't need just political assistance. Thank God for the politicians of God. Of, of course, I'm not saying that they're bad, but what I'm saying, we cannot just become Republicans or Democrats in order to change America. You can't just do it that way. It doesn't work. Tea Party cannot even do it. Independent Party cannot do it. Now, in any nation where you live, if you're hearing me right now through this broadcast, I am not saying that you have to go and join any political party in your own nation in order to influence and impact your nation. There is a better way to do it. Join God's party. Join Jesus' party. The theocratic party. The government of God. Where God rules. He doesn't need people's vote or people's you know, uh, ballots. He wants to change people's lives. And when we allow him to control our lives, that's where we can start changing the world. So here we see this woman who was living almost like, like a prostitute, if you like, you know, the expression. She was an adulterous woman, married, divorced, remarried, divorced, remarried, divorced, five times, and the sixth one now she was, you know, hanging around with Jesus. He, you know, she, he is not even your husband. So as they were dialoguing, because Jesus was trying to touch this woman's lives and turn her life around. And the disciples came back now after they went to the town to buy some food. And they were wondering, why was the master talking to this woman? They didn't know what was happening here. But look at it here. Then in verse 28, the woman went, you know, he said, Then, leaving 
her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Jesus reached out to one woman, but the woman is going to reach out to the whole people, the whole community. That's a good strategy right there. Amen. You're not going to be going about giving your church buses and, uh, and um, pay, you know, giving people shoes and clothes to go on vote during the election. And I know we've just finished up with one, of, one major election here in the United States. And churches were doing everything, getting on the radio, television, preachers are begging, pleading, maneuvering, and uh, I mean, I can say almost hypnotizing the people of God to go out and vote, vote for this, go for, vote for that, vote for the Democratic Party, vote for the Republican Party. But I've not been hearing those preachers going about talking about voting for Jesus. We're not in God's kingdom to go and vote for the Republican Party or Democratic Party. We are in God's kingdom to go and take the gospel out so that people can vote for Jesus or turn their lives to Him so that He can save them. But look at what this woman did. She ran into the whole, com in, in, in the whole community, the whole city. No microphone, no loudspeaker, no TV camera, no internet, no social media, no satellite, no nothing, no pulpit. A woman just saved. She met with the real living water. And she couldn't hold it to herself. She was excited so much so that she wanted to tell everybody. What did she do? She ran around, look at what she said. Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. That was her message. Come see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Nobody can even knew about my, the secret of my life, but this man knew about it and he told it to me. And I know he should be a prophet. So he continues here. They came out of the town and made their way unto Jesus. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought to him food? And in verse 34, Jesus answered, My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you, uh, do you not say, four months more, and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes, and look at the fields, look at the harvest, look at the field. Church leaders, look at this nation, 300, I mean sorry, 310 million people, that's a huge harvest here. Not even to talk about at least 7 billion people on the planet. The harvest is huge. The harvest is big. The harvest is ripe. While we're busy playing church for revival and convention and conferences, souls are dying, going to hell. Jesus said, don't procrastinate, saying that we have six more months, four more months. We have one more year. We're going to build another cathedral. We're going to pay off our mortgage. We're going to pay the rent. We're going to buy the, the shopping mall. We're going to buy another building. We're going to buy this. We're going to go on television. We're going to... For what? If we are doing all of these things, yet we're not winning people directly, we're wasting our time and our resources. He said, have eyes. Open your eyes. Don't procrastinate. Don't say, we'll do it next time. We'll do it when we have the money. We'll do it when we are paid off our own mortgage or when we are pay, paid off our building. Then we can do that. No, 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 no. Everything is already ripe. Everything is ready. That's what he means. He said they are ripe. Or, what? Well, they are ripe for harvest. Verse 36. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together thus the saying one sows and another reaps is true I sent you to reap what you have not worked for others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor we're reading here in John chapter 4 of course we begun from verse 27 all the way to verse 38 the harvest is ready. Humanity is ready. But where are the laborers? I, I'm not saying where are the CEOs or where are the presidents, founders, and um, the apostles of 
super apostles, super prophets and prophetesses, and super evangelists, and super pastors, and super bishops, and super teachers, super... I mean, we have just made Christianity become a game, marketing game. Making money. And we're going nowhere. And we preachers have become like a bunch of lazy you know, people sitting around rocking, you know, uh, our old daddy's rocking chair. Meeting after meeting, event after event, conference after conference, revival meeting after revival meeting, you know, convention after convention. I mean, all on and on, dedication. I mean, every year the pastor has to organize meeting after meeting after meeting, and the people are sitting down spiritually, they're getting fat and fat and fat, and they're going nowhere. Why? Because the preacher has no vision. And when it's time for political you know, elections and all of them, then now they're coming out, telling everybody how to go out, you know, go out and vote. So we see here, Jesus is showing to us that he's looking for laborers. He's not looking for CEOs and presidents and super, super apostles, super pastors, super bishops. He's looking for people that will roll the slaves. Jesus commands all of his followers in John 14, 12 by saying, Anyone who truly believes him shall be able to do the same great miracles that he did. And shall be able to do even greater miracles because he has gone back to the Father in heaven. Taking the Lord very seriously at his commands, Dr. Indy Aldu from Nigeria, Africa, has been used powerfully by God to raise many physically dead and dying people for over 35 years worldwide. Now, with those tangible proofs and experiences following his global ministry today, he has written an international best-selling series known as Raising the Dead. In this entire how-to best-selling series, Dr. Aldi reveals and teaches what God taught him personally and practically during a nearly four-hour vision in heaven concerning what is death and where did it come from, what to do or not to do to raise the dead, how to raise the dead, why we need to raise the dead, when to raise the dead, and where to raise the dead, so that you too can do the same and impact your world for God. In order to buy these life-changing and revolutionary international bestsellers, log on to www.mymiracletv.org right now.
Her late, her mind be free. Her heart be free. Her marriage be peaceful. Her home peaceful. I thank you, Lord, for restoring that which the devils have stolen from this woman's life. It is in the name of Jesus. I command you to receive your miracles now. Amen. Amen. You can do it in Jesus' name. Yes, you can. You can do it in Jesus' name. Touch your soul. Touch your knees. Touch your knees. Stand up. Thank you. Go backwards now. Don't be afraid. In Jesus' name. But I thank you. Thank you, Father. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ben. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Do it yourself now. Say, oh Lord, you're free. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bend over, forward. See how you're going faster now. Go backwards. Thank you, Jesus. Forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Backwards. See how you open your eyes. See how you're going faster. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Do what you do before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do what you do before. Hallelujah. Do what you do before. Do what you do before. Hallelujah. 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 Very exciting. Yesterday, you know, we went to the city of Sil Sylvester where we're planning. In fact, next week, by the grace of God, we are coming to Sylvester. Those of you that are listening to us, you know, whether you're living here in Albany or through the internet, you're listening to us in Sylvester or elsewhere. We're coming city to city. Beginning from Albany, I've been going on the streets now to the you know, public places, taking the gospel out, ministry and delivering people by the power of God. Yesterday, we went to Sylvester. We were there in preparation for next week. Uh, um, I don't mind saying that, you know, for the sake of those of you listening, we're coming next week, November 16 and 17, 2012. By the grace of God, we're coming here for this great service. But we went there to prepare. And as I was leading my people, we're going from door to door, door to door, house to house, to the shopping malls, meeting with people and those who were sick. I mean, that family where I went to, standing up there, the husband was you know, suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia. Then they had the Down syndrome grandson. I mean, a family loaded with so much of problems. Right there in that house, God used me to bring solution to them. As I prayed, cast out those devils of Alzheimer's and dementia out of that man and that Down syndrome demon spirit. Cast him out in Jesus' name. Why? God has sent us to bring the kingdom into people's homes, into people's lives. Then my team, you know, the members who went about, um, they were telling their stories too. As they went from door to door too, they were just bringing deliverance to people. A lady who was very sick, full of pain. And one of, you know, one of the members of our team just went laid on. As the other sister was watching it, she was so amazed to see her relative heal instantly. The excitement, they wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. But we have taken the gospel of Jesus, made it into a dead religion, or a dead religious system. No power. So we are talking about God's strategy of impacting the world. Amen. Now let's go again to the gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 8 and Luke chapter 9 and all the way to chapter 10. We are seeing how Jesus was exhibiting and demonstrating the strategies or the mega strategy, as I can call, from his father, how he could impact the whole world um, without joining the party of the Pharisees, the party of the Sadducees, and the party of the Herodians, or the party of Herod, nor even the party of Pilate. Like John the Baptist, they came with an agenda from God. They weren't going to be soiled or contaminated by going into the political game. They had something better from God. And they put into action the plans of God and he did work. The whole land of Palestine or the whole land of Israel was impacted. Even though they didn't use radio, television, they didn't use anyone with social media. No telephone, no fax machine, no printing press. 
nevertheless the results were phenomenal so here it says in Luke chapter 8 after this Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another he traveled from one town one village one city to another Jesus was doing that he is the head of the church not the Pope not the pastor not Billy Graham not Benny Hinn not Aldo it's Jesus we're talking about Jesus here and every preacher has to repent we've got to really get back and do what Jesus did to our own system today we might look at Jesus as a vagabond a homeless man a circus man a man traveling around a wanderer but that is how the kingdom of God operates this is how the yeast impact the dove you've got to penetrate the educational system our colleges our universities you've got to impact the political arena you've got to impact the economic arena you've got to impact every stratum of the culture sports entertainment business world family world church world religious world atheistic world I mean anywhere any place where there's human being we've got to move and infiltrate but we're sitting now saying let them come to our meeting and get saved let them come and get healed let them come and get blessed let them come and get prosperity let them come come and make money but here in chapter 8 of the gospel of Luke verse 1 after this Jesus traveled he traveled he traveled he traveled you see another strategy this is not only a Jehovah's Witness job or the Mormons you know job this is those of us that are saved born again Holy Ghost people speaking in tongues we're supposed to be traveling moving around hallelujah after this Jesus travel about travel about travel about from one town and one village and I can say one city to another to another to another for three and a half years Jesus wasn't using the mass media but let me tell you he could have done that he could have sent down vision from heaven he could have spoken from heaven like he did to Saul to Abraham and the rest of them. he did speak through vision thunderous voice people heard him so that he spoke very quietly but he never did all of that he used simple things of this earth for three and a half years or three years if you like Jesus infiltrated the entire Roman Empire the whole world African nations were coming Ethiopians Nubians on and on and on Asia people were coming Europe the entire Roman Empire was really penetrated he impacted them with the gospel of the kingdom of his father and do you know what he wasn't just going about talking talking and giving sermon series thank God for the preaching and the talking but Jesus gave a holistic total complete gospel full gospel talking acting talking acting signs wonders miracles every word he said be thou cleansed be thou forgiven your sins are forgiven you rise up and walk Lazarus come forth from the dead the storm comes when he spoke his words perform miracles and this is what the 21st century preachers should are supposed to be we t talk and things happen hallelujah so the Bible says he went from town to town village to village and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God the good news of the kingdom of God the kingdom of God is, is a party on its own okay it's a political party on its own are you hearing me now it's not a democratic party that is the kingdom is, is the party of God it's not a republican party that is it is the party of God it's not a tea party it is the kingdom of God party theocratic kingdom by God for God and through God everything is done for God and by God and for his glory now he says here the twelve were with him okay so he was teaching the disciples too they were traveling with him preacher when you move the people are following you they move with you 
If you don't move, don't expect the people to go out, you know, neighborhood, you know, uh, 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 visiting the neighborhood and preaching and while you're hiding in your office. It's not going to work. You set the tone. You set the example. Jesus, the head, set the example. The disciples were following him. They were learning from him. So the, the, the Bible says the disciples were with him. And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Now he continues uh, uh, to mention the name of those women. But let's see something here again. In chapter 9 of, Mark, uh, sorry, of Luke again. Luke chapter 9. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to break I mean, sorry, to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for your journey. No staff, no bag, no break, no money, no extra journey. And he continued right now. In Norman, if you read the entire chapter 9, you will see the strategy he was using, how he impacted. He didn't hide, pull himself out of the culture. No. He eyeballed the culture. He confronted the culture. He engaged the culture. Hallelujah. And I pray that God will speak to every member of the church right now. Beginning with the leadership. That we can see how we have drifted away from the things of God. And we're just doing our own things in the name of God. Just in order to make money. And make our living. And prepare for our retirement. And you know that in the kingdom of God there is nothing called retirement. Am I right? All the way to the cross, Jesus was preaching. The thieves were saved. I mean, one of them was saved. The Roman soldiers who were pierce, piercing him, persecuting him and insulting him, some of them too got saved. He didn't hide anything. He was preaching throughout, even all the way to his death. When he was resurrected preaching, even when he went to Hades or Sheol or he went to, you know, to hell, he preached again. Oh, hallelujah. This is your host, Dr. Andy Audu, coming to you live through this broadcast at www.raisingthedead.org. And I know you've been hearing this over and over and, and until we get our hearts right, get our minds right, and we bow our will to the will of the Lord and follow His strategies of engaging and impacting the society and our world and our generation, the 21st generation, we are fighting a losing battle. We are seeing more people going to hell like crazy simply because we are not being obedient to the plans and the purposes and the strategies of God. But some of us are hungry for God. We want to do the right thing. We want to take this gospel out. And we want to see the entire world turn upside down by the power of the gospel of Christ through words, but through our deeds or our actions of the supernatural signs, wonders and miracles. Amen. And we'll be looking for those of you in Sylvester. We are coming November 16 and 17. Get ready and uh, you will be so impacted and possibly as you go to our website at www.mymiracletv.org you will see the exact address and the time of the service. We will be looking forward to seeing you there by the grace of God. I have to close today. But the message is still going on.